Welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast, powered by Healthy Steps Nutrition. At HSN, our mission is to empower 1 million people to take control of their health one step at a time so they can prevent and reverse chronic disease. My name is Nicole Coyne, and I'm the founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, home of CrossFit HSN and HSN Mentoring. In this podcast, you are going to learn how to take one step at a time so that you can take control of your health. All right. I'm so excited about today's podcast episode. It is with Brittany. She is a licensed registered dietitian on our staff here at HSN HQ. She actually started a similar path as I did in regards to working at the hospital, realizing oh, that's probably the opposite side of healthcare, really sick care that that we want to be on. And she decided that she wanted to transition over to HSN full-time. We are so excited to have her on. She works with a lot of our individual clients. She actually heads up our um, continuous blood glucose monitoring program with clients who are interested in learning a little bit more about what's going on on the inside of our body. In this podcast, we are going to talk about continuous glucose monitoring, what it is in this experiment that she did. Now, she doesn't have diabetes, and typically people who have diabetes are the only ones that would qualify to get continuous glucose monitors. But through a partnership that we have, if you do not have diabetes, you are able to get a continuous glucose monitor through HSN. The really cool part about this program though is that you get instant feedback from a dietitian. Every single week you have calls with a licensed registered dietitian to help you understand what the numbers mean, why they're going up, and specific tips to help you prevent chronic disease. When we think about blood sugar management, this is a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to preventing and even reversing chronic disease. There are so many people that have prediabetes. Americans, one in three have prediabetes. And the crazy part about this is 80% of people do not know it. Over 50% of the population has diabetes or prediabetes. That's a lot of people. When you look at the leading causes of death in the United States, nine out of the top 10 are caused or worsened by elevated blood sugar. We need to get control of this issue. And I believe that one of the things that you can do to take control of your health is first understand what's going on on the inside of your body. So we're gonna talk about her experiment that she did with continuous glucose monitoring, what she learned about herself, how the program works with HSN, If you are interested in learning more about this program and you're wanting to to get nutrition coaching either with or without continuous glucose monitoring, you just need to click the link below and apply for coaching. We'll jump on a discovery call with you and learn a little bit more about you, your goals, and you can learn about HSN to see if it's the right fit for you. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we focus on a habit-based approach. So meeting you where you're at one step at a time, and most importantly, keeping you accountable to that thing that you're working on. We're not just giving you information. Information without application leads to no transformation. We're not information deliverers. We are teaching you how to make health a way of life, but most importantly, keeping you accountable to that. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to this episode all on continuous glucose monitoring with Brittany. I hope you learned something and enjoy. Brittany, welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Thanks, Nicole. Excited to be here. You've been doing a lot of stuff over the past few months. You came on the podcast, I guess it was a couple months ago, and we were talking about continuous glucose monitoring, diabetes, prediabetes, blood sugar management. And you decided that you were going to go through your own CGM experiment, kind of push out your knowledge. And then you're like, Hey, let me come back on the podcast and talk about what I've learned. I'd love just to start there. How did it go um, doing your own CGM experiment? It was great. I definitely learned a lot. I, I mentioned this before, but I did this two years ago. And regardless of doing it two years ago, I still learned even more this time, honestly, probably the most, um, out of, out of the experiment. So it was really good, especially because the CGM that we use that's paired with Cygnos, it's a whole entire month. 
the previous one that I used, it was only two weeks. So I was actually able to see so much more. I was able to go through my normal life for a longer period of time, have different events come up. So it was very insightful. Awesome. Let's dig a little deeper. What were some of the learnings that you found doing this yourself? And then we'll transition to how this is applicable to our listeners and some of the clients that you've worked with. Absolutely. So we know vegetables are great for us. Um, If we know anything about nutrition science, right? Um, That's something that is a staple. Vegetables are good for us. The fiber is really good for us specifically for that blood sugar management and eating vegetables at the beginning of your meal is going to actually help that blood sugar stay more stable throughout the course of those two hours in which your blood sugar does usually go up and then come back down. So eating vegetables at the beginning of my meal made such a difference. I did post my social media, a few different experiments of, you know, like I, I do eat pizza from time to time. Most families do, most um, people do. So I was trying to figure out how can I still enjoy pizza with making sure my blood sugar stays stable. So I had a salad and a pizza and I, I switched up the order. I had pizza one day and then the salad after, and I saw what my blood sugar did. And then I believe the next day I changed it to salad and then a pizza. And it was a drastic difference in the fact that I barely had any spike. I think little to no spike with having a salad and then a pizza, which that pizza has quite a bit of carbohydrates in it. And you would think, oh man, that blood sugar is going to be going up. So it didn't, it did do much. So the value of vegetables has been huge at the beginning of meals. And then Nicole, I know you mentioned this all the time in your podcast, on your social media, but taking that 10 to 15 minute walk is also so crucial. Um, I gathered some coworkers and we would take a 10 minute walk after lunch. Um, Actually, it was a nine minute loop. So it wasn't even 10 (laughs) minutes, but even nine minutes made a difference in my blood sugar, making sure that it was stable. So those were the two ultimate tips that I would tell anybody, any client. And um, that would be such a big, big takeaway for using the CGM and seeing the effects of how the blood sugar can be more stable with something that doesn't even cost any money, right? Like that walk, doesn't cost you anything to do. So pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. The benefits of walking after meals, gosh, there's so many blood sugar management definitely is one of them, but it also helps with digestion too, right? Helps get, get things moving, uh, mood, energy levels. A lot of people feel that afternoon crash, just getting your energy levels up. So super good um, idea to get into a good routine of just walking after meals. A lot of times we'll put the dishes down. We'll go for a walk after dinner with the family. And and it's a really, really great habit to get into for ultimately overall health. Um, So I love those two takeaways. I noticed the same thing in regards to salad first, then pizza or pizza versus salad. I did the same experiment, which was really interesting. I was super surprised about that. So when you're thinking about meals, have your vegetables, eat your protein, save your carbs for last. Honestly, I feel like a lot of times you end up, if you eat carbohydrates first, you end up eating way more of them because you're really hungry versus filling up your stomach with the fiber, the vitamins, minerals, with veggies, with the protein, which also helps you start to to feel a little bit full and then go to the carbs where you're going to feel more satisfied. So Um, really great tips. What was one thing that you were super surprised about as you were doing this experiment? And it could have been from when you did it before or now. So something that surprised me was, um, one Saturday evening, um, you know, socially drinking. I don't drink very often, but, you know, had a few drinks and my blood sugar actually stayed stable, I wasn't drinking anything sugary by any means. So it it didn't have that effect. But the next day, my blood sugar was out of whack. Granted, I probably didn't sleep as much either. 
But those were the two things that I was thinking, wow, if I were to do this every, maybe a few nights a week, having a few glasses of wine with dinner or like a few beers with dinner, whatever it is, then the next day is when my blood sugar is going to be affected. And the problem is we don't normally see that correlation happen because it's happening inside of our body, right? Say, for example, you go and work out, you usually feel that soreness within a little bit and you know, okay, that was a good workout or like you have the quad burn, right? But with your blood sugar, you don't see that. You don't necessarily feel that. Like the next day I felt fine, but I didn't know that the first thing I ate in the morning, my blood sugar went up way more than it should have. And then I couldn't get my blood sugar to come down the whole entire day because of the effects of the alcohol, but also a little bit of the sleep. So that definitely surprised me and also continued to reiterate that everything in moderation is very beneficial. I love that. You know, I think it's interesting when you start thinking about drinking socially, what types of food are you having, which if you are eating higher carbohydrate foods, your body is going to prioritize breaking down that alcohol. You're going to have that blood sugar spike a little bit later, and it's going to stay up longer throughout the night. Typically people who drink alcohol, their fasting blood sugar is elevated and it also could be elevated from not getting enough sleep. So there's many different kind of reasons why your blood sugar will go up. I think this would be helpful to to kind of talk through some of those. Obviously you mentioned food. So we have three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Carbohydrates, big umbrella, but that is the main food that's going to increase our blood sugar. There are some other things that will also increase someone's blood sugar. What are some other things that might might affect that? So medications, and we did touch on this on the other podcast, but A lot of people might not know this. Certain medications will make your blood sugar go up, specifically steroids. So if you're sick, if you have to take a Z-pack, you know, if you have an ear infection, maybe they give you antibiotics and steroids, that would make your blood sugar go up. And so in that time, if you know you're having to take steroids because of something that is making you sick, that's where it's going to be even more important that you're moving throughout the day, not just after meals, which you should be doing as best you can, but throughout the day to keep getting that blood sugar in and out of the bloodstream. So it's not sitting there and getting too, too high. Um, Stress is another one. I, I did see this one on my continuous glucose monitor, um, specifically in the afternoons. Again, we did not mention this a little bit on the podcast previously, but I would go and look at the, the Cygnos app and I was thinking, wow, why is my blood sugar up? Well, it was at the end of the day, I was trying to wrap up work and, you know, get to appointments or whatever I was doing and my blood sugar would rise. Or I did have a doctor's appointment and after the doctor's appointment, I, I don't think I ate breakfast that morning actually. But after I saw the doctor, my blood sugar went up and I was like, how is my blood sugar going up? And I was like, oh yeah, the cortisol effect of the stress can make my blood sugar go up. Um, So that was very interesting. I also had a client recently that had a, a series of meetings that were very stressful for them for the whole entire week. And whenever we met, they were frustrated because they said, you know, I'm, I'm doing what we talked about. And once we talked through it, they admitted, oh yes, I, I was very stressed and that definitely played a role, definitely was a factor in making the blood sugar go up. Although they were making good decisions and having good meals throughout that week, it didn't really matter because those meetings were very stressful to them. Um, and then lastly, high intensity exercise. Again, I did see this one personally, which surprised me. I guess a few things surprised me. Um, but I remember going and doing a strength workout, maybe five to 10 minutes of cardio at the beginning, just as a warm up. But then it was just strength. And afterwards, my blood sugar rose. And that is a result of adrenaline. So adrenaline is a hormone and that can make your blood sugar go up, but 
that's an okay spike because once it goes up, it does end up coming back down. Um, so just a few things to be aware of, you know, maybe that high intensity workout, HIIT workout, CrossFit workout, we just make sure that we sprinkle in, if you were to do the CGM and you find that your blood sugar is going up significantly higher after some of those workouts, maybe we add in some walks and we're doing three to four days a week versus five to six days a week. So that's also the beauty of doing the CGM and seeing what works for you. It's a natural response, right? Your body is releasing sugar to give you energy um, during those longer high intensity workouts. So totally natural, totally normal. Okay. Your body's going to use it. And what we found is when you're doing higher intensity exercise, when you're eating carbohydrates after it doesn't go as high as if you didn't exercise and ate a little bit more carbohydrates. So something interesting all around high intensity exercise, making your cells more, um, open to getting that carbohydrates outside of, or getting from, from your blood inside of your cells. So super interesting there. I want to take, um, a transition here. You know, you work in the hospital. I think of it as the sick care system, right? So you are a dietitian in the hospital. You also are a dietitian here at Healthy Steps Nutrition HQ. Uh, you work with a lot of the clients that come on board with the CGM. It is obvious why continuous glucose monitoring is helpful for diabetics. It helps people get real-time feedback and see what's going on. I remember my uncle and I were, were eating dinner and he's had diabetes for quite some time, ended up getting a CGM. And we saw at the end of dinner, his blood sugar was high. He's like, oh, I'm going to go around the block, um, like around the parking lot. We're going to walk together. And man, he was he was going so fast. I couldn't even keep up with the guy um, oh <laughs> with his gosh. walk, but he got it down like super quickly. He sent me a picture after he's like, oh, my blood sugar is already back to normal. And um it just is a way for them to get that real-time feedback without pricking their finger a bunch of times, which honestly hurts when you put a CGM in, mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. really hurt. Um, can't, you can't feel it. I don't like needles. Cannot feel it. Um, why would you say that doing a stint of CGM for the general population is helpful? So using the CGM, like you said, is going to give you the real-time feedback. And also you might be surprised that your blood sugar is more elevated throughout the day than what's normal. So this is going to be in, in a really important aspect because that's going to help prevent you developing diabetes, prevent you developing kidney disease, heart disease. So by using the CGM, you can take that information with working with a dietitian and say, okay, this is what's really valuable for me in this change of this part of my meals, this part of my diet, this part of my exercise. Well, I thought I was a good sleeper. I'm really not. Or, you know, I was wondering why my sleep didn't feel very good and I'm not able to soundly sleep. Well, their blood sugar is up and down. They're waking up in the middle of the night, having to use the restroom, whatever the case may be. And they're able to see that inside view of, okay, this is truly what's going on. And, you know, I can still enjoy my life and maybe have the ice cream with family on Saturday or Sunday evening. But this is how I can also modify it to make it healthier so that I'm not continuing to put myself at risk for diabetes, again, kidney disease, heart disease. So I think it is really important for the general population because they're able to see if I continue going down this road, this will happen. But if I continue going down this road, I will continue to live longer, healthier, happier, really. Absolutely. You know, when you look at the statistics, one in three people have prediabetes. 80% of those people do not know, right? So how many people actually get their blood work done every single year? Or you do, but you don't actually compare it to the previous year or even know what those numbers mean because your doctor just says, okay, yep, everything. there's nothing completely out of whack, so we don't need to take a deeper dive into it, which is really the way the healthcare system is designed right now. Like, 
you have the opportunity to take control of your own health to prevent, and in a lot of cases, reverse chronic disease so that you can live longer. When you look at the research, you know, people who exercise regularly, don't smoke, minimal alcohol, and have a BMI that is within normal range live on average an extra nine chronic disease for years, like nine years without chronic disease, like take the quality of life out. Also the financial side of it, like how much money do you spend Mm -hmm. on managing chronic disease? If you could have invested in yourself and learned a little bit more about your body from the beginning, before you started recording, you know, I've, I've hired some really high level mentors over the years. Um, Donald Miller for one of them. I have been to his house. I have had the opportunity to sit in weekend workshops with him. And one of the interesting things that I've seen him do, I've seen one of uh, the other mentors I've had, Michael Hyatt, they eat so healthy. You know, when you go to events at, at their houses, for instance, or like mentoring events, what is available to you to eat is vegetables, protein, some complex carbohydrates. It's not the processed junk and danishes that are normally at these events. And when you listen to them, they prioritize exercise. They prioritize sleep. They don't drink alcohol, I mean, maybe occasionally, you know, but they're they're really prioritizing their health to be able to show up as their best selves. And I think so many people just kind of turn a blind eye. Oh, well, I don't have a problem. So I'm going to continue down the path when in reality, like, what if your life was supposed to be lived so much better? What if you aren't actually feeling the way that you could feel because you're not feeling in your body and you don't understand how to feel your body in the best way? Right. You've worked with some people. And one of the cool things about the the partnership that we have uh, with continuous glucose monitoring and you being able to see all of the numbers in real time for people that do uh, the CGM with nutrition coaching with us is we can see this number of in range versus out of range. So in range, meaning like these are normal blood sugar numbers out of range, meaning like, Ooh, they're not normal. And we need to see how much we're in range versus out of range. Talk to me about some of the clients that, that you've had, um, that have started off and then how did they end up after a month? Yeah, absolutely. So to give some number references, if you've got your blood work done, there's most likely, you know, annual, annual blood work, they will give you an A1C. If you're just getting monthly, every three months, six months, they might just do a blood sugar. Well, a normal A1C is 5.7% or less. The, the pre-diabetes range is a 5.7 to 6.4, 6.5 and above someone has diabetes. Well, this percent of A1C, this is your average over a three-month period. And that percent correlates to an average blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is normal, that 5.7, I know these are a lot of numbers, but If it is at 5.7 or below, that means your blood sugar on average is 120, 117 or below in that range. Okay. So when we're talking about these ranges, we're talking about 80 to 120. So that's the within range. That's the normal range. Blood sugar is looking good. And um, in particular, this client that I worked with, we started out at 0% 0% in range. Okay. So you have and pre-diabetes. Average, it's a di- you have diabetes. It's undiagnosed. <laughs> yes. Yes. But the cool thing is as we continue to work together, so that was that 0%, that was an average blood sugar of 150. Then it crept up to 34%. So that average blood sugar came down to 130. And then we were able to get it to 55, 60%. So we're getting that blood sugar closer and closer to that range of 118. And then by the end of working together, we are able to maintain around a 70% within range, which on average, that blood sugar was 110. So we were ultimately able to reverse that pre-diabetes and get it into that normal range that would help decrease 
the risk for chronic disease in the future for full blown diabetes for this person, for full blown kidney disease, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is the beauty and the gold <laughs> of the continuous glucose monitor. I love that. I remember having a client who I had worked with for a really long time and I knew like he, he just stayed a little bit stagnant. I was like, something's going on here. And sometimes you just need that real-time feedback really quickly. Like I'm seeing it's a positive reinforcement or I'm seeing it's a negative reinforcement that's going to drive me to away from the behavior that I'm actually doing. So I, I said to him, I was like, Hey, I really think that you should do this for a month. Let's just see what's going on. And first week, we're at about 30 to 35% in range. By the end, it was 80%. So those people that maybe are finding themselves doing really good, but then falling off on the weekend, the all or nothing mindset, people like, this is great for you because you get real-time feedback immediately, which is so nice to positively reinforce the good behaviors that you have and also help you realize this instant gratification. What I'm wanting right now is not serving what I want most. And maybe I need to go in a different direction. So I think it's a really cool way uh, for people to see, get an inside scoop. Cause when, again, when you look at the conventional healthcare system, you're not getting this until you have diabetes until it's too late. And you talked about the A1C numbers. It's not just a number, right? It's all the complications that come with it being elevated. So if if you're having a A1C level of 10%, the likelihood of you having tingling in your fingers and getting infections and having starting to lose your eyesight and all of these issues is going to happen. It's just it will happen faster for you because elevated blood sugar injures your cells. <laughs> Extended yeah. elevated blood sugar. Okay. Exactly. So this is a really cool thing. Simple tips for anyone to do, making sure that you're incorporating vegetables, non-starchy vegetables with your meals, going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, walking, you know, what are you drinking? A lot of the, the number one source of added sugar in our diet, which is going to directly increase your blood sugar is through sugar sweetened beverages. So what kind of coffee are you having? What kind of creamer? What kind of sodas? What are you drinking? Let's drink mostly water. I think that's a really good option. Even one of the things that I know you drink a lot of, especially during the summertime, it's hot. It's people are sweating a lot. Those electrolyte replacements, some of them are even loaded with sugar. Element is one of our favorites. That's a good option. That's not loaded with sugar pretty salty. I do half a, a thing and then I'll do half a little bit later. It's it's quite salty, um, but it's a good option for the electrolyte replacement if you are in a, a sweaty area like us down here in South Florida. Hmm. Yes. Uh, just to piggyback off of that, if you're not a soda drinker or if you are a soda drinker, really, um, sparkling water is a great replacement just to get that carbonation. And there's tons of Tons of different good brands. I know you guys use like Polar Pop, Reduce Spindrift, Minimal Sugar. And then also on the electrolytes, I believe um, Liquid IV have ones that do have sugar in them right now, but they're coming out with a no sugar one. So that's important to make sure that you are paying attention because even though some of these items are marketed as healthy they like to sneak in some extra sugar in there and to pay attention to what's actually in the ingredients. Absolutely. It It really does. So taking a second to look at the nutrition facts label, if you're looking for an electrolyte replacement element is one that I would definitely uh, recommend giving a try. So if you're thinking of if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, okay, maybe I want to try um, continuous glucose monitoring. I really need a coach to to help me interpret these numbers. You know, I think there's a few different types of people that this would be a really good option for. Um, number one, if you are getting your blood work done on a regular basis and your numbers are trending in the opposite direction of what you want, you don't have diabetes yet. Um, technically with our continuous glucose monitor, 
program, you can't have diabetes and come through us. It's for people without diabetes. So unfortunately, the way um, insurance and FDA approval is with continuous glucose monitoring, this uh, program with us is only for people, which is silly because the people that have diabetes probably need us the most. Um, not probably they do need <laughs> our help the most. Uh, if you, if your numbers are turning in the opposite direction, this would be a great program for you. If you have a family history of diabetes and you are seeing a lot of people in your family or extended family go down in a direction that you want to break the cycle and take control of your health now and learn a little bit more, because the truth is, is what, what affects Brittany's blood sugar at a level is probably not the same thing that's going to affect mine. So getting to understand what you can have, what works for you is really important. Maybe you are struggling to lose weight like the client that I mentioned before, and you have that all or nothing mindset, and you know that you would benefit from having more data quickly to understand that positive reinforcement of those good behaviors. This could be a really great option for you. And if you just love the numbers, if you're like, I really just want to see the numbers, I want to learn a little bit more about myself, you're curious, this could be a really great option. You know, there are different continuous glucose monitoring programs out there um, that you can go through, but none of them have the individualized personalization with a coach to help you keep accountable, help you um, interpret the numbers, create a plan that's realistic for you. I think that's the beauty of our program because you know, all of our dietitians have a dashboard to see your numbers in real time. We can give you feedback on weekly calls, right? There's a reason why we have high accountability nutrition coaching paired with this program because we want to give you a, an interpretation, help you navigate the numbers and understand why are my blood sugars going up the way that they are? Or like that client that's like, I'm doing everything, what's going on? And it came down to, Oh, I had some stressful meetings this week was really stressful. And that stress, that cortisol was increasing my blood sugar or the medications were increasing my blood sugar. What are some things that I can navigate and do to help manage my blood sugar in this season? So the continuous glucose monitoring pairs this for one month with nutrition coaching so that you can create a plan and really just be empowered with the knowledge that you need. Information without application leads to no transformation. If you've got the information, okay, but you really need the application to make health a way of life and have the, the healthy habits, that solid foundation to understand uh, what you need to do to take control of your health. Brittany, as we're wrapping up today, any other final thoughts that you have? No, I think we covered some really great, valuable information as well as truly why the CGM is such a beneficial tool for someone that might be at that plateau, might not know what's going on, might want to see more of those numbers, might have that family history. So if you guys have been thinking about using the CGM, definitely give it a try. It is a hundred percent worth your while. I love it. Brittany, thank you for all that you do. I'm so excited that we're about to see each other in a few weeks in Nashville for the Gym Accelerator Summit, where we're gathering coaches and gym owners together to really prioritize health and wellness inside of their community so that ultimately we can all make a greater impact together. So I'm excited for you to start talking to some coaches about performance nutrition too. <laughs> yes, I will see you soon. Can't wait. Hope you enjoyed that episode with Brittany. No, I really believe that healthcare is preventative and the way we think about healthcare is really sick care. We're just adding more medications and more side effects because of those medications and we're not really fixing the root cause. When you think about preventing chronic disease, what can you control? You control how you sleep, your stress management, your mindset, the food that you put into your body, the lack of alcohol, your habits, your lifestyle, sleep, daily movement. You know, we look at four pillars at Healthy Steps Nutrition. The core four is what we talk about. Nutrition, sleep, mindset and stress management, and daily movement. That's where we start with clients, but every single person isn't getting the same plan. We're meeting you where you're at. You know, I would challenge you to, to do a self-reflection. Think about your daily habits in those core four. How are you sleeping? How are you moving? 
Are you moving a couple times a week when you go to the gym or are you moving consistently at least 30 minutes every day? How are you sleeping? Are you sleeping seven to eight hours or is that a struggle for you? What's one step that you can take in the right direction? When you think about your eating throughout the day, if you were to send me pictures of your food, which um, you won't be sending me pictures, but if you were sending me pictures of your food, is it mostly whole foods, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, meats, or is it highly processed foods that have a lot of additives in there that are tougher for our bodies to digest? What are you eating? Is it balanced? Are you having protein with every single meal? It's amazing when you have continuous glucose monitoring and you can see how your body is impacted and then you can start correlating how you feel, how you sleep with what you're eating and amazing things happen. It makes those habits even stickier, even more reasons for you to focus on whole foods, focus on balance, limit the amount of ultra processed food and added sugar that we consume. Those are the three core nutrition principles that we believe at Healthy Subs Nutrition. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. One simple tip, start with vegetables with every single meal. Make sure that you are incorporating protein. Okay. Maybe three tips and go for a walk after meals. Those are simple things that you can do to start taking control of your health. All right. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review, and we'll see you back here next week.